still watching my channel and uh, basically trying to manage themselves through this uh, technological genocide um, and full scale <laughs> global eugenics um, agenda. Uh, you already know who it is, target individual CJBK. Uh, I am currently it's two about two twenty two a.m. Um, Wednesday, October thirtieth. Um, I'm currently at. Um, hold on a second. So, um, yeah, I decided to. I'm kind of spend that at my mom's house because she's been. She's been like uh, telling me, like I, I don't get to come over as often as I'd like to since I live from afar. But um, man, so all right, where am I trying to start first? Um, well, for starters, um, I uh, when I got here, um, first thing I noticed was well, once she told me she wasn't going to be home when I got here, all that stuff. I got here, and um, the first thing I noticed was um, as soon as I walked through the door, I could feel, as soon as I walked, let's see, I'll say this. Um, as I'm walking to the building, I could sense little subtle, subtle energy changes uh, in my field, meaning I'm probably crossing, um, <laughs> maybe I'm crossing the, the threshold or planes of, of stronger electromagnetic fields around my body or something like that. And that's as I'm walking towards the building. Um, mind you, there are, I think, uh, maybe two cell tower clusters on top of this building. It's an eight floor apartment building. Um, and uh, then when I walk into the building, I feel this, um, the shift, the, the, the energy shift, that subtle energy, I feel it increase just a little bit more, you know? And then um, she lives on the fourth floor. So when I, um, when I would take the elevator up and I, um, get to the door and then I walk through the apartment door, I feel the intensity of this energy presence increase even more. Um, I noticed that the lights are on, uh, the TV was on, <laughs> Uh, of course, the Wi-Fi, all these other things on. And it's interesting because I'm so used to when I walk into my apartment because I already, like be, like before I even leave the house, I turn, I basically unscrew the fuses. And the only fuse I would leave on is the one that, you know, controls the refrigerator. That's the only fuse I would leave on. But when I walk in my apartment, um, I don't feel um, the energy as intense but what I do notice uh, in my in my apartment um, let's say uh, going into my building um, I do feel slight energy shifts but what's even more uh, interesting about let's say if I decide to take the steps instead of taking the um, taking the elevator up and then maybe I'll do a video where I show um, certain electronic devices or boxes where electronics are held. But when I'm walking up the steps, there are these gray boxes. I'm not sure what these boxes are for or whatever, but they, they're like container, uh, containment boxes um, that run on each floor. And as I walk up each flight, um, of steps or as a rather 
when I get in front of the staircase of each floor. At the top of each staircase, there's these boxes on the wall. And these boxes, they emit um, crazy amounts of energy. Um, I can sense it just from my hand alone. Um, when I get close to the boxes, when I walk up the steps, and I could, I could literally, if I turn my palm facing towards the boxes, I can feel a heat, like a generated heat wave, in a sense, basically pointing directly at my body as I'm walking up the steps. And it's, it's always interesting because I've made myself more um, sensible to this because um, before I used to wonder, why am I getting so tired just walking up the steps? I used to notice this months ago and I was like, all the bike riding I do, I shouldn't be getting this tired like this. And it's funny because even when I'm working, even when I'm working, I notice um, that, like, yeah, it's definitely a difference when you're biking and walking up steps. Yeah, but um, there's certain things I notice, and I'm not that technically um, knowledgeable on how to explain it, but um, it's like, for whatever reason... I feel like what they do um, is, is because of all this extra energy and, and the um, the stored energy that is uh, from all the uh, being collected from all the nanobots that's inside of our body. I think it's also throwing off um, like cellular respiration. It's throwing off the gravity of the, my body. Uh, many different things are being, um, you know, um, affected. So when I walk up steps, I feel like I'm, it's just like, I don't know, like I just feel heavier and heavier. But then I also feel like something is like pushing down on my entire body. They was like, that's gravity. I'm like, nah, but it's coming from above my head, though. It's like something's pressing, like something's pushing down on me. And, um... Like it literally feels like, like I I could I could have no bags on me or nothing, but for whatever reason, it feel like, it feels like. I don't know, like I'll be walking up the steps, and it would, I could feel like almost like pulses, being sent towards my body, but coming from those like those gray boxes, in my building. You know, so there's that, then um. You know, so I would get, I would walk inside my apartment and I wouldn't necessarily feel as much energy when I walk in because I have the fuses turned off. Um, I'm assuming that when I have the fuses turned off in my apartment, the amount of dirty electricity is probably reduced significantly. So um, the environment, the air doesn't feel as thick and dense, you know, but um, as far as like my mom's apartment, or pretty much anyone's apartment that doesn't really know about dirty electricity and and what type of environment dirty electricity creates and, and how it can change like the thickness of the air or the density thereof um, of, of frequencies that are like, um, I guess, flowing and bouncing around in, in a room. But um, yeah, when I, when I, come into anyone's apartment to have a whole bunch of electronics plugged up it's like I feel the energy I feel the dirty electricity I feel all the um, different electromagnetic fields from the wiring in the walls the, t the, the TVs lamps uh, I could feel the electromagnetic field from TV remotes from batteries that's not even batteries that's not even being used like 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 these batteries right here I could even still feel like it's not strong but I can still feel the electromagnetic field around the battery so it's like <clears throat> so it's like it's like you see the battery right 
even though you can't see it, but there's basically like a field, like an energy field around the battery. And um, <laughs> what's, even, what's even more interesting, where's the remote? This is the remote, no batteries, right? But the funny thing, Yeah, I could feel all this thermal energy. I could feel, because it feels cool over here. But then once I come here, especially somewhere, it feels like something is being spewed from here. And then it feels like I could feel something kind of like, like something warm, just kind of like spew. It's almost like, I don't even know how to describe it, but it's like, um... It's like, I don't know. It's like this, this warm, it's like this wafting feeling. Almost like, like if, it, if you could see gas, if you could see gas, you know, flowing in the air, that's how this electricity feels. This, I don't know, cause I know remote controls have um, transducers and compa capacitors inside of them. Um, so, uh, just imagine if a room is filled with uh, radio frequencies and dirty electricity, that's basically electrical current or or electricity that's in space, right? Um, that electricity is still interacting with the components of the of the remote control, even though there's no battery inside the remote control, there are components in here that are magnetic, right? Once you combine electrical with magnetic, then you generate an electromagnetic field, right? Now, this uh, that electromagnetic field, even though maybe because I'm more sensitive, because after about four, after about five years, was it four or five years? I don't know, October 2020. But after about five years of, let me see, I got to do the math. 21, 22, 23, 24, okay, fine, four years. Um, after about four years of going through this, um, yeah, I probably am more sensitive, but it's, it's, it's with good reason, though, because the more sensitive I become, the more I realize, hey, probably, I mean, hate to admit this, but um, the myelin sheath around my nerves are probably deteriorated just enough so that I can actually sense the field of just about every single thing that has an electromagnetic field. Like, I can sense it all. Um, but, um, and then, of course, the V2K, they're so arrogantly boisterous and, and proud of what they do. Um, mind you, my mother's 75 years old. She doesn't really know anything about technology. Um, she... I try to teach her as much as I can about what I'm learning about electromagnetic radiation. Um, and it's, it's, it's taken her some time, but she's slowly starting to get some things. Um, and they've been attacking her so bad. Uh, and I'm trying my best to see how can I get her to learn how to, you know, use her discernment and make sure she doesn't react to things or people too much because I don't want her because right now she lives by herself and I don't want her to get to a point where you know she could be putting herself in any more um danger as far as socially because you know I already know there's a lot of you know gang stalkers that live around here well remember when I, I was I was living I was basically living no no I wasn't living out here when I got targeted uh it was after I gave up my first apartment and then I came back home I realized no no, no yeah, I was still living in my first apartment and I and I came over here to try to tell her about what was happening to me but it was it was in that month when I came back over here I realized oh so people know about what's happening you know, and that's the and that's the the craziest part about all this is to realize you could be living around people your whole life, and they all know 
what's happening to you, but you just didn't know what was happening to you. It That's the most sickest and sadistic thing that I've ever had to come to realize in my 35 years, or at the time, 30 years of my life, is that people would know you your whole life, and they would know what's happening to you, but nobody would tell you nothing. And it's like, and and then... I don't know. Well, okay. I can only speak from my environment. I know because other TIs live in different environments. So I can only speak the lingo that I, that I know of. So, um, they would say, they would say, oh, you're not supposed to know about technology. And it's funny because as I was walking around, I, I happen to hear kids and I'm talking like teenagers and even little preteen kids talking like 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 i be mindful i be mindful not to always internalize anything that i hear because remember this is a this is a perception warfare type of situation so everything is about messing with your perception everything that you hear and see everything's being messed with right now luckily if you have done your research and you have grounded yourself in that research and knowing that this is all technological right it's to the to the most um what's what's the words i'm looking for palatable sense or or um tangible sense is technological right but if you dig deeper, you realize it's truly, it's directly connected to um, satanic ritual abuse and um, other types of esoteric things that most people hardly ever think about. But when you think of, I mean, most, I, I'm pretty sure most gang stalkers don't believe um, that this is in any shape, way or form connected to satanic ritual abuse or... Um, anything of that sort because for the most part you got to remember a lot of these people are um conditioned they're conditioned and then they are also um they have been set up through generations of you know um being induced and being told that you know if you if you tell anybody anything about this or that you know, people going, they're going to find, they're going to label you crazy. They're going to try to set you up for stuff or they're going to try to kill you. Right. Those three major things. And it's like, I told myself <laughs> since day one, I was like, I told myself since day one that I was not going to allow myself to be taking um what's the, what am I trying to say um sorry it's kind of late um I had fell asleep for a little bit and then I woke back up around like 12 55 um and then while I was up um I started feeling like these pulses of energy hit me and whatnot um matter of fact while I was laying here um, I felt these pulse attacks hitting me in my right testicle and then come to find out when I sat up, I realized I had two different things linked to me. Uh, one, in my Faraday bag here, uh, I need to buy a new one because there's a hole in it, so now it's compromised, but um, I have a portable charger inside of inside of that bag. And, um, of course, you know, it does have a charge to it, but even if it doesn't have a charge, it still has energy storing capacity. So they could basically direct energy towards the portable and then, um, resonate the portable charger with my body or a part of my body. And then they can, um, you know, basically transfer energy from the portable into my body. But not only was is the portable connected to me, but I also found um, traced. I also traced energy coming from the remote, even though there's no batteries in it. And then also the cell phone. Now the cell phone is definitely a major 
key to this whole thing because the cell phone acts as your personal server for all data coming from your body. Um, your cell phone basically stores this data and then once you go back online, um, whether it's cellular network or or you know um, or Wi-Fi or whatever, it then transmits that data to another, you know, like a remote um, server location or transfer that data to the cloud where someone um, somewhere else is probably sitting behind some screen or whatever, and then they're they're analyzing and processing this data um, with the assistance of AI. Um, but, um, yeah, and when I think about it, so, okay, I try to keep paying attention to how these things are, like, the, the hopping and the, the routing and stuff like that. All right. Now, imagine, okay, you see my, my head, my face, right? What you can't see, at least not with this camera is there are layers of energy, layers of energy fields around the body, right? What they have done is they have found the resonant frequency of me. They have found my unique frequency and then they resonated with it. Now there is a line, there's like an energy or a direct link from, I guess it's satellites um because it's like it comes at an angle but it connects right into here it's like let me see it goes right into here i need to cut my hair so then i can get a better view but there is a dent there is a groove or a dent right here and then let me see there is There's a groove and a dent right here too, right in here. And as I, as I place my finger there, it's like as I place my finger there, there must be a lot of data being transferred through there right now as I speak, but because as I, twist and adjust my finger as as it's on that spot. It's almost as if like I'm changing polarities or shifting fields or something. And yeah. Yeah. So the phone has a lot of energy, right? There's a lot of energy coming from the phone and it's like connecting up here, right? It connects to me up here. So that is one resonance between the phone and me. Now remember, we're talking about the internet of everything, everything, the internet of everything, all these biosensors that is that are in the air now. And, I, and I'm gonna tell you this right now, um, we're talking like it's October 30th, right? And certain times of the day or in certain environments or whatever, even with my naked eye, I could, I could almost kind of look. I could almost look straight ahead and then I could feel my eyes adjust just a little bit. And then I see this blanketing shower it's like golly it's almost as if like 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 when you really think about if you if you if you see a video of what coronal mass ejections look like i'm telling you i think these nanobots are so i think it's so many nanobots i could literally see it flowing not vertical but horizontal, like it's like, like almost like, almost like it's a, like a, 
like like a like an invisible dust storm or something. I can't even I can't even describe it, but it's like like there's certain times like if it's daylight outside and then let's say there's like a I don't know, like a black garage door and you know, you see the light around the black garage door, but then sometimes I could look directly into a dark spot in a well lit area outside and then I would see Oh, it, it looks like like dust, right? But it's moving so fast. And you would automatically think to yourself, well, maybe that's just pollen. But I'm like, no, nah, I don't think so. I don't think so. But um, like I said, I don't have the equipment to really test environments and stuff like that. What I do have is an air filter. I do have an air filter in my home, but I don't plug it up as much because obviously the moment I plug it up, um, funny, because as I said, uh, obviously, he said, obviously, um, Tyshawn, Tyshawn is male number two. I have four, four individuals on the B2K, two males and two women. Um, all four of them are from the Bronx. Um, because they're the ones that basically hooked me up into this whole thing to begin with. Um, Cause like I said, when I was living, when I was living in Brooklyn, I wasn't experiencing no, at least no, none, nothing noticeable. At least I wasn't aware of it. Um, but for the most part, I, I thought my life was pretty cool for the most part. <laughs> um, Right, like everything seemed normal when when I was living in Brooklyn. Everything seemed normal. Then when I moved to the Bronx, it wasn't when I moved to the Bronx. It wasn't until March of 2020. That's when things started getting weird. When that whole domestic violence incident with the neighbor down the hall, when that happened, it was the days after that event. That's when things started getting weird. You know. Um, didn't realize I was just being synchronized to the cloud. So then, you know, a bunch of satanic ritual abusers, ritual abuse handlers um, were syncing me up to the cloud so then they can broadcast me to the secret society. And then they can all basically put me on like a public display in the meta, their metaverse. And, um, basically um hold me up like i'm in the coliseum of the of the old of the old greek roman times and and it's like right now i'm being like attacked by lions tigers and bears and because <laughs> that's what that's what it really feels like when you're being targeted and you're aware of what's happening it's like you really do feel like you know the christians of old or or you know other you know people who have been basically thrown into the lions or or the people who have been you know that the 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 romans the or whatever they the the rulers at the time they felt like oh this person doesn't care about the republic or whatever take them to the coliseum and and sh let everyone see what happens to to people who don't you know who don't conform you know so it's like this is this is exactly what it feels like it's 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 just only difference is it's not happening out in the open right it's just they're trying to be they're trying to be secretive about it right now the funny thing is what they're doing it's only just a smidge bit uh more secretive than what places like china is doing china's china China or like North Korea, they're basically doing like the same things, but they're just not being as secretive about it. It's like I always like to tell people that like when it comes to some of these things, um, you got two types. You got the ones who's going to use the Vaseline and you got the ones who's not going to use the Vaseline. But either way, they still, they still, they still effing you. They still, they still abusing you. You know, um, when they're, when they're, when they're trying to be real secretive about it and they're trying to, you know, they're trying to, um, they're trying to like 
do it in a way where they don't ever want to be caught or whatever the case that they, they trying to they just basically trying to use vaseline they trying they trying to be smooth about it right they still them they still they still want to be you know doing whatever to you but they just trying to be smooth about it now in like you know obvious places that basically let you know oh we running things and if you don't like it we gonna do this to you and they just out in the open doesn't don't care if the media knows or whatever but um yeah they're the ones that that don't use the vaseline they just gonna tell you straight up um and it's like the same that could be said about like you know politics in america they say democrats use the vaseline republicans don't use vaseline <laughs> You know, so and then um, what you are tending to notice um, is that a lot of people are probably starting to see the difference where it's like people are. Like, well, I mean, honestly, I don't trust no party. I only trust I only trust, you know, uh, character and what people can say about another person's character. You know, but obviously with this whole targeting thing, you can't you got to make sure you could trust the people that are telling you something about somebody. So you barely, you barely could trust anything that somebody would say about another person. I want to hear, I want to experience the person myself. I want to hear from the person myself. I don't want nobody telling me nothing about somebody because that ain't, that ain't no different from basically trying to control the perception of someone, you know, and how they see another person. You're, you know, cause if you don't have no real interaction with that person, how could you really believe what someone else tell you about somebody else if you never interacted with that person yourself you know but i mean unless you have like there's clear evidence posted somewhere where someone where you've actually seen that like oh that person has actually done something to this person or whatever that's really the only way but other than that you know We're all kind of just like like most people are just basically following, um, are basically just being mind controlled when you think about it. If I, cause somebody used this example one day, they was like, um, most of the time people will just believe anything they're told, especially depending on how severe the information, um that they're being told depending on how severe the information is that they're being told people will just believe it automatically if someone expressed to you in the most like i guess serious of tones or whatever and say oh that guy you see that guy right there that guy steals or that guy's a pedophile or that guy's this and someone expresses to you expresses these things to you in the right tone and right sentiment you might actually not even think twice about it you'll probably just believe what they're saying you just be like oh what for real you be like mm, all right most people would just automatically believe it because who someone say who will lie about it but obviously a lot of people will lie Especially if if you're paid to lie on someone and then if you're also coerced to lie on someone, um, yeah, you'll probably, you know, um, you'll probably tell this, tell that lie to somebody and then next thing you know, that person will believe the lie because, well, um, mm, some people, some people just don't have the energy to want to look for the, look for, for the truth themselves anyway. Um now um something else i've been keeping in mind too um is that they oftentimes try to make me seem like i am wrong for trying to defend myself i am wrong for trying to inform people about what's happening to them they're claiming oh he don't really care about nobody oh he don't really you know he don't really do this he don't do that Mind you, these are all things that they're saying while I'm being targeted. Funny thing is, I've never really heard most of the things I'm hearing right now that's being used to demoralize me. I don't, I've never really heard these things said to me or said about me um, before my targeting. But it seems like after the targeting, after I'm, you know, experiencing uh, these symptoms of electromagnetic interferences with my body and 
and and and these wireless energy transfers going into my cells and everything and i'm suffering from the exhaustion the pain the cognitive um you know fogs and stuff like that now all of a sudden it's like everybody got something to say when i'm on when i'm when i'm basically everyone got something to say when i'm down ain't that something but that ain't nothing new that ain't nothing new um because people hurt people love to hurt people let's just let's just put it that way hurt people love to hurt people now what they are trying with another narrative they're trying to push is that um they're like oh you don't care about other people because you know you know the military is involved you know these people involved you know secret societies is this and that and i'm like i get that i get that you are all fearful but i am coming from a space where I'm so, I'm so done. Like I've been, I like honestly, I've been done with Earth for for many years. I'm just here because God still feels like my light is necessary in the world. Um, because I've already expressed, you know, to to you guys, you know, in, in videos before that, um, I've definitely struggled with, um, um inadequacies and struggled with um um you know struggled with basically um well I've, I've struggled I've struggled uh with um living with uh people or living around people and stuff like that I, I forgot how I was trying to explain it but um yeah, so it's like, I, I I mean, this is coming from someone who has been abused and probably, like, I tried to commit suicide the first time. For the first time, I was probably, like, eight years old. <laughs> so it's like, I've been done. I've been done <laughs> with Earth for, for many, many years. But it's just like, I don't know. I'm still here because it's something about my life that God is like, nah, I'm not done with you yet. You know, you still, you still gotta be here to, to do something else. So I'm like, all right, I'm here. Um, trying to, um, I'm here trying to, I don't know, figure, figure out my purpose or live out my purpose. And if my purpose basically means that I have to make my light even brighter, even through trials and tribulations and torments and everything, um, then then that it is what it is. Um, but they're trying to make me seem like I'm wrong for wanting to save to in in any facet um, morality for the human race and trying to save dignity for the human race this this pulse that's going it's like there's something really resonant it's like i don't know it's like the right testicle it's like oh, let me see because it's like i feel it's like i feel this frequency like okay so you see where the nail of my middle finger is following along that that's where the frequency is going but then as i come up it's like there's like a, a junction or like a, a a point or a node or something and it's like somewhere like right here where is it i think it's like yeah it's like right here I don't know if the camera's seeing where my finger that, but right here, there's like this junction. Yeah, there's like the, there's like a junction or something right here, and it's like I'm connected to four things. It's like there's something going that way. There's something connected to the phone. Then there's something going towards um, my right testicle, and then there's probably the portable, um, the portable charger, and also the remote, and maybe 
something else in here. I, I don't, can't really tell what else. There's something, something coming from this direction. Right. So there's something, there's something coming from this direction. That's strange. I'm not exactly sure. Now you got the, there is a light switch here, but it's, it's down. But I mean, obviously there's um, probably the dirty electricity from the wires in the wall, cause I could feel it. And then there's like a, there's like a focal point of energy right here. Yeah. yeah, yeah, there's like a focal point of energy like right here. And I could feel that connected to my, I could feel that connected to my brain too. So, but, um, yeah, uh, yeah, I'm just trying my best to uh, learn as much as I can, um, try to understand the way the data is being routed, where the energy is hopping from or to, um, you know, uh, just trying to do the best that I can. Um, they got so many different uh, things happening with my body right now. So I know I told you all before that. Let's see, where is it? right here they have a steady pulse going into some tissue on on my uh like uh like the gum tissue but it's like something is there's something so right where i pinch that as i move the camera back and forth as i move the phone back and forth like this I could feel that there is a resonance between the phone and whatever this uh, this this tissue area here. And then also, I'm trying. I mean, you probably can't see it if I was to just flash the camera inside, but there is a pulse here, and then there's this lump. Um, I'm pretty sure it's an infection that was created by them. Um, because, well, when you're directing all this, uh, this radiation into a, a, a site of living tissue, um, you are inducing cellular death, right? Um, but not only are you inducing cellular death, but you could also be causing scarring and tumor growth. So I'm not, I'm not entirely sure what that is right there, but I'm pretty sure, uh, that's one of the goals that they have, um, is to try to develop a number of tumors within the body and, and they're probably praying to their gods that it becomes cancerous. So they're not basically die of cancer. Then they collect some type of insurance policy or collect some type of insurance money that I don't know about a policy that they may have on me. Cause remember we're all sold in a digital sense. Um, a lot of people are making their money off of the data collected of from human bodies. Um, and these human bodies are living bodies. Um, now, somebody, just, I just heard uh, one of the women say, now you know he is snitch ass nigga because this is what I'm telling you. They're making money off of people's bodies and people don't know. And people are suffering through ailments that they should not have. 
Now, mind you, there's definitely been times where I've already kind of pinpointed on many people who are um, benefactors of this tormenting technology. And I don't remember, I treat everybody the same because I don't really have, I don't have proof to point at anyone and say it's you. No, I don't have any proof to do that, but I watch people. I watch how they move. I watch how they converse with people. I watch how they, and how they, I watch how they move when I come in. Uh, like, I don't know. Is certain things a person do to know that they are, they change, they're shifting. They're shifting because of your presence, because of your presence, they're shifting. So I'm always looking out for the shifty, shifty, shifty. You know, people who look like they're hiding things from you, they have no choice but to shift, right? I I could literally be sitting, I, I could literally be sitting in a park, sitting on a park bench, reading a book, right? And more times than likely, I'm aware of at least the closest 10, 10 people around me. I don't know why, but so most of the time, I'm probably aware of the people that are around me and if they were having a conversation in a distance and things like that. I learned that if you're quiet enough, you quiet your mind enough. And I know that's hard for people with V2K because we always got somebody talking shit in our head. Um, but if you quiet your mind and your spirit enough, you can feel people shift their attention from what they're doing to you. You can literally feel them shift their... Matter of fact, I'm going to use a term that they say. You could feel them direct energy towards you. Um, And I say in direct energy, not in a sense like, like, like the weapon direct, like, like a weapon directed energy, but... Um, there's a, there's a, a saying, your attention flows where your energy goes or yeah, no, uh, no, I said it wrong. <laughs> your energy flows where your attention goes or your attention goes where your energy flows. No, your energy flows where your attention goes. I think that's how it go. And if I'm sitting on a bench reading a book or whatever, and then I could hear at a distance people having a, um, like what seemed like a moderately moderate volume conversation as they're getting closer, but then as they get closer around me, all of a sudden they either stop talking, or all of a sudden they act like they're whispering, and then they go by, and then as they after they go by, then. That's when you kind of like, like this, this is where the discernment part comes in and where you got to learn not to react to things as they're walking away. That's usually it's either when they get closer or as they're walking away. That's when I would say the V2K can be activated or that's when, you know, they usually start to talk, um, whether it's the V2K or I say V2K because I also tend to believe that um well remember everyone is uploaded to the cloud that means they know the position of every single person and where each person is going at any given point in time so if they have everyone uploaded to the cloud that means they also have their voices uploaded to the cloud so what i keep in mind is that everyone's voices can be used to be injected into someone else's mind who um, is going through the V2K torment. So if Jane and Joe were having a conversation about something else or whatever, blah, 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 then they walk by. The handlers already knew Jane and Joe was on this street. The handlers already knew Jane and Joe was coming down this sidewalk. The handlers already knew at what time or what exact moment that they want to send or transmit the statement that is in Jane and Joe's voices to basically um, be heard by me, right? Now, I have one theory where they basically take the voices of people that are nearby a target and then they, you know, type up a statement or whatever, and then they transmit 
that statement, but in, you know, Jane and Joe's voice into the target's auditory cortex. That's one theory. Another theory is that um, if you watched a few episodes of Black Mirror, you realize that there are overlays of, you know, augmented data, you know, whether, I mean, like because they're transhumanized, they can see a different spectrum of light. They can see the data as it overlays real life things. So like, you know, like AR and Pokemon Go, stuff like that. You know, right now we're just looking at a couch, right? You're just looking at a couch with clothes on it. But with with what they can probably see, for all I know, there's probably five people in digital avatar form, even though I don't have the spectrum, I don't have the visual spectrum to see the light display or see the, the, the data display, but there's probably five people sitting right on this couch and they're all watching me. Or it could be, you know, whatever. Like it could it could literally be a digital sign outside the building and and, and, and there's arrows pointed to this window. He's here, whatever. I don't know. But I do realize that they have definitely advanced this technology to that point, but only a certain number of people on this earth have access to these, to this technology and those spectrums. Um, I don't know. Um, like I say, I'm just trying to make sense of it all. I'm trying to learn um, myself. I am no expert um but I, I am trying to see if i could find people who may be uh maybe studying on the brink on this on the same path as i am and they're noticing some of the same things as i am um uh, i don't know but uh right now i think they're trying to it seemed like they're trying to calm down on uh how much pain it put me in, but I still feel all the resonances. I still feel the resonance with my right testicle. They reduced the intensity, but I could still feel the pulse going into the right testicle. Um, I also still feel the energy coming out of um, the lower right side of my back. Um, and, and, that, and that's the strange part because on the right side, it feels like energy is there's a resonance on the on the lower right side of my back and then on the lower left side of my back like this is all lumbar i'm speaking of um so but on the left side it feels like energy is coming into the the the, the, the spinal area but on the right side it feels like energy is coming out and then that energy it's like i don't know it's like i feel energy coming out right and then it like loops up, like it loops up. And once it loops up, it feels like it's connected up here. Now I've heard them say this from time to time. Um, they say he's recycling energy. I don't, I don't know, this is what they're, what I've heard them say for V2K. And it's like, as I rotate my hand like this, it's like I feel myself. It's like I feel my. If you can hear that, that flutter, that that, that my friends, that is directed energy also coming out the side. It's, that's not coming from down here. That fluttering feels like something is coming through. It's like something is coming like not through the skin here, but um, like on the inside of my mouth, it's like something is seeping out.
right. So you notice how you don't hear it now? Something is seeping out, like, on the inside of my mouth. I don't know. It's like... It's like something is seeping out of the body. Um, and I think that's probably, like, uh, when you think about, like, a channel. Like, how a river has many, many channels that flow. Um... I think that's the flow of electrical current that they're directing and moving through my body. And then some of it's actually escaping through um, some opening inside of my mouth or something. I don't, I don't know if it's a gland or or whatever, but something is escaping. Um, but, um, yeah, I'm trying to figure this stuff out um um it's, it's interesting because they're always like chris don't realize he's jeopardizing people's livelihoods he don't realize he's he's putting people in danger and i'm thinking to myself you telling me that all of a sudden when i'm becoming target all of a sudden everybody's life is at, is in danger now people's lives been in danger this system has been up and running for probably far, far longer than I've, I've been a, been alive, probably. I don't know. I was born in 89. Let me see. The internet was created in 79. Uh, I, I think the internet was created in 79. I think 1979. But they've been working on all this resonance and frequency following response stuff since... What's well, it's like well before, um, you know, the 1920s. Like this, this stuff is this. The the intention behind all this stuff has been around for centuries. Um, yeah, the intention behind all this stuff has been around for centuries. Um, I don't know, but um. I'm trying, y'all. I'm trying. I don't know. Um, I guess that's all I got for now. Um, I thought I was gonna have something more profound to say, but uh, I can't. I can't really think of nothing right now. Um, mm, if anything, I'll come back. Uh, as always, take life one breath, one thought, one step, one day at a time. Peace.